Hi, and welcome to this series, an introduction to property investing. Thank you for joining us. My name is Daniel Wood. I'm one of the founders of Momentum Property Education. And in this series, we're gonna be exploring the three steps to become a successful property investor and the three mistakes you have to avoid. So to become a successful property investor, there are some things you need to know and implement. So the first of these is that you need to know how to find property deals. How do you get them? And then how do you analyze them? How do you do your due diligence and research? Next, we look at how you calculate deals so you can run the numbers, you can do the math. And after that, once you've chosen your deal, done it, you need to know the second step, which is project management. How do you make sure that a project goes according to plan, budget, and timeline? That's a very important skill. In addition, you need to understand money. So first, you need to be able to fund your deal. You need to know how to find the money for the deal and also how to manage your portfolio and manage your money over time. There are also three major mistakes that I'm going to teach you here in this series so that you can avoid them and make sure that your success journey becomes as easy and quick as possible. So. Before we start, let me give you some bad news. In this series, we're gonna be showing you all these things, but video learning is not enough. It comes down to taking action. So you get all these videos through our YouTube channel, so please subscribe, hit the notification bell. But if you don't take action off of this, if you don't put it into play, it won't lead you anywhere. And sadly, I have to tell you, even if you spend all this time learning the knowledge, putting yourself in, you will have challenges on the way. And we'll be looking at how to overcome challenges in one of the later videos in this series so that they don't debilitate you and keep you back from your goal. Because even the be best laid plans will have setbacks. So we're gonna look at that together and make sure that you are positioned in a way to succeed. So in this series, we'll be looking at a lot of these. We'll be looking at how you find deals. That's what we'll be doing in this video. We're gonna be studying how do you best find deals. In our course that you can find by visiting MomentumPropertyEducation.com and going to our academy, you'll learn how to analyze different property markets and analyze different deals. So in Freedom Property Intensive, which is an online course, you'll learn exactly the due diligence process that we use to analyze deals so that you may make sure that your deals are going to go the way you expect them to. In a later video in this series, we're gonna look at how you calculate deals. So we're gonna do that together. We're gonna to look at two different deals so you get that comfortable calculation and feel secure in running your numbers so that you know when you're buying a deal that you're working off of the right figures. Project management, key part. We're gonna be doing that in another video outside of this series. So again, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you learn exactly how to project manage deals. Make sure they go according to plan. Later in the series, we'll get a deep dive into money, exactly how it works, the way money functions in today's society so that you have everything you need to succeed. And then we'll be also in one of the later videos watching the three steps. So we're gonna get right in now to how do you find a property deal? Because that gets really, really exciting. How does that process work? And let me tell you a little bit about my background. So like I said, my name is Daniel Wood. I've been a property investor for the past um, soon decade now. And I can tell you, it hasn't been an easy journey. We started out, I live in Sweden. I'm born and raised in Sweden, but I invest in the United Kingdom. So in England, Wales, and Scotland. And I started really well. I got myself a really good mentor. He worked together with me and we started building a portfolio. So in our first year, we were actually able to acquire a total portfolio value of about one million pounds. So it was a very exciting journey and actually a UK magazine, an online magazine, reached out and interviewed me about that journey we had made. What we didn't really understand, because this is where it comes in, is that there were a lot of things we hadn't put into place correctly, especially with us being international property investors. And we're gonna look at that in this series. But there were multiple things we didn't have correctly in place. And what happened was that a lot of things started going wrong. And sadly, our initial success was short-lived and it turned around and we took multi-million uh, losses. I mean, we lost more money than I ever had in my working career. And what was terrifying was that every single one of my advisors was telling me, Daniel, it is time to uh, file for bankruptcy you're done, this is over. And that was a very stressful situation, obviously, but when someone tells you when you're multi-millions in debt, you know, you're not sleeping, and, and they told me, 
you know, Daniel, you can, you can just close down your company right off that debt and you're fine, just begin again. Uh, that did sound very attractive. Uh, but I started thinking, what would that actually mean? Who, I mean, if I don't have to pay that debt, who does? And I realized it was my investors, the people who believed in me and who had trusted with me with their money. And I said, no, absolutely not. I will not throw them under the bus. We will not bankrupt this company. But we had no idea really how to go on. And that's when I was so blessed uh, that I went and saw Tony Robbins speak and we started working with his organization. Uh, later, we also came into contact and started working with Kim Kiyosaki, uh, who wrote the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, together with her husband, Robert Kiyosaki, and, and also Zuckerberg Institute. So these three different organizations, along with multiple other mentors and, and wonderful people who supported us, uh, helped us restructure a lot of our debt, restructure some deals, and then start doing more successful deals. So we were actually able to turn it around. I tell this story just to make sure that you're ready for what you have to expect. It is a very exciting journey and I'm very happy now that I've taken it because obviously now I'm in a very good position. I'm able to spend my days doing this if I want to or spending time with my kids. Uh, but it was a very tough journey to get here. The idea with this YouTube channel is to make sure that you don't have these same challenges. But even if you do, I want you to know there's always light at the other side of the tunnel. And you can always reach out to us. Go to our website, MomentumPropertyEducation.com, and you have access to all of our different courses there. You have our academy. We have multiple free courses, different videos, different online content, and also paid courses where we'll support you more. So we're going to be here to help you even when you have setbacks to help you turn it around because it is a challenging journey. But let's get back to the fun stuff. Let's start talking about how you find deals because the end result is brilliant. And if you have the right team and the right support, and that's what we'll be talking about in the project management section, is that you will be successful. If you do your correct analysis, as we teach you in, pro in Freedom Property Intensive, and if you calculate correctly in deals, that's which we'll be doing in the later episode in this series, you will be fine. You'll be able to do this. So the way to find deals, there are really two ways to go about it. One is you do the work yourself, meaning you go to places like Rightmove, like Zoopla, uh, you talk to lending agents, you talk to state agents, you talk to banks, you know, you talk to everyone you have in your contact network and you try to get, you know, let them know that you're in the market to buy. Uh, what that will take is that you'll be going on a lot of viewings. You'll probably want to get a relationship with a builder that might be able to join you on some of these viewings so that you get, you know, quotes so you can run your numbers, do your calculations. In addition to that, you'll want to, you'll want to start putting in bids. And the best recommendation is to run your numbers first and then put in what would be a considered a very low bid. And you want to do this on a lot of properties. So generally you'll get no as an answer and you'll have to negotiate. And we'll have, we have a later episode coming out in a separate series about negotiation. So stay tuned for that. And we'll talk about exactly how you negotiate. But you'll want to be putting in a lot of different bids and you'll want to be doing a lot of different negotiation, putting in these and getting a lot of no's. But over time, once you've, you know, if you put in 50, 100 bids, you will be able to negotiate a good deal. So that's one way of going about it, doing the work, doing the legwork, putting in that time and energy. The other way is to use what we call sourcing agents. A sourcing agent is someone who is doing that legwork and is not gonna buy the deal themselves. They're instead willing to sell the deal to you as an investor. That is a very valuable part of our team because for us, what we can do with that is obviously put that into play. We can buy that deal. We get the benefit of that legwork and they just take a small commission. So it's a key part of running deals is getting sourcing agents. The difficult part is finding good sourcing agents. I want to work with people who have multiple years experience. I rather most, I would like to have at least a decade's worth of experience and who have a passion for sourcing. So I want them to be investors in their own right, but even more importantly, I want them to have sourced for a long time and built a team. I want a sourcing agent to have at least five to 10 different uh, people in their organization supporting them, meaning they're not just a one-man band. It's not just something they do to pay the bills. It's something they've built a business around. They are customer-centric. 
Obviously, you also have to interview them, make sure they know what they're talking about, get references, talk to people in their area to see what their, what they, what their reputation is. And once you've found a good sourcing agent, that is something to hang on to. It makes a huge difference. They're a key, key part of your team. A sourcing agent essentially is, it's like an estate agent, really. It's, they're an estate agent, but they work for you as the buyer. So they're a very valuable part of your team and finding a good one is key. It's something we talk about in a lot of our courses is how to find the right sourcing agents. So stay tuned for that as well. So that will be your key to finding your right contact, your right team. Either you do the legwork yourself or you find a sourcing agent who will already be able to provide a team. So that is all for this episode. Make sure to subscribe to our channel because in the next one we'll be talking money. How do you find the money to, to, you know, to be able to complete your deals and how do you avoid the three major mistakes most people make. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.